Bronte family is an exceptional family, but in a way it's Emily Bronte who's the most exceptional of, the, of them all, really. The most singular, the most independent-minded. And um, her teacher, Monsieur Heger, in Brussels, said she should have been a great navigator. And she's got all that kind of spirit to her of independent-mindedness and finding new worlds. And so the wonderful thing about uh, Wuthering Heights is the way that it uh, in one way, it is the most disciplined and complexly organised novel. If you try and work out its um, backstory and its time scheme, it's beautifully uh, structured and organised. And the way it's told, it's got so many different narrators. It's like a little set of Chinese boxes set inside each other. So in one way, it's wonderfully controlled and organised. And yet at the same time, it seems to touch the most kind of primitive and deep human feelings about uh, the nature of uh, human culture, what happens when human culture meets uh, something beyond it, itself. And uh, again, it's quite a realistic novel. So Lockwood at the beginning, he's like somebody from Jane Austen. And then he walks into Wuthering Heights and he keeps getting it wrong. You know, he sees um, some dead rabbits and he thinks they're kittens. He thinks they all must belong to the same family. Well, they all do, but none in the relationships that he thinks that they, they do. So he constantly misunderstands it because he's in a world that touches much more powerful and primitive kinds of feelings. So Emily Bronte, like uh, her siblings, uh, creates these fantasy worlds. So here there's the little grammar of geography that they had as children. And, and in it, you can see that they've written the word gondol like it was a real place. And that was the fantasy world that she created with Anne. And again, uh, like her sister Charlotte, she brings lots of gothic elements, lots of fantasy elements, lots of fairy tale elements into the novel, but within that very disciplined kind of framework. So if you think of Heathcliff, for example, in one way he behaves in a totally realistic way. You can see where he lives, you can see the way he speaks and so forth. But in another way, he's deeply mysterious and seems to touch all sorts of supernatural or near supernatural forces. Nobody knows where he's born, uh, nobody knows who his parents are. He's only got one name, he's just called Heathcliff. Why should he have that? And people call him an afreet or a ghoul. He seems to be in touch with satanic kinds of forces. He digs up Cathy at the end and wants to be buried with her. He seems to be able to choose his own death. People say that he's walking at the end. So there are all these kind of gothic elements and yet they're never fully supernatural. They just seem to haunt the edges of the book, haunt the characterization of it, so that uh, it's constantly under control in that you get the power and the uh, emotional force and the eroticism of Gothic uh, in this novel, but at the same time with all the realistic power of a novel that seizes you as if it could really be true.